Well, hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Unlocked. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson. Boy, oh boy, you guys are in for an absolute treat this morning. I have got the amazing Joseph Watkins with me today. I want to tell you, just before Joseph and I got on uh, and, and I got him ready for the show this morning, I was actually on his website looking at some of his viral videos. And oh my God, you guys, at the end of today's show, I'm going to give you a link. You've got to go there because they are funny. Um, I was telling him that uh, my husband would say, yeah, they appeal to your very warped sense of humor. Uh, but I, I was having a bit of a giggle to myself. I thought they were really funny. And I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy what uh, Joseph is going to be speaking about today. Let me tell you a little bit about him and uh, why, why you should tune in and you should really, really pay attention to what he's going to be sharing with us today. So Joseph Watkins, he founded uh, Procreative Studios back in 2000, where his team produced infomercials, TV spots, and web sales videos. He directed thousands and thousands of videos for clients, including Google, LinkedIn, McDonald's, Goldman Sachs, Chevrolet, and Home Depot. So we're not talking, you know, uh, garage type businesses. We're talking big business. Uh, he he loves uh, to be able to shift away, you know, as our as the habits of people have shifted away from television, which you guys would know in this pandemic. I don't know how many of you guys have been scrolling on your phone, watching videos online. People are shifting away from TV. Joseph launched his business called Funny Sales Videos. That's where I was watching those darn funny sales videos, where his team creates attention for getting videos to go viral. He creates viral style sales videos that actually entertain the viewers into taking action. So with after over two, two decades worth of experience, hundreds and millions worth of views and over $50 million in track sales, here you go, guys. That's why I said you should listen up and take note of what Joseph's going to tell us today. He now enjoys sharing his eight simple steps that any business can follow that drive immediate online sales. And he shares all of that in his podcast, How to Make Videos Go Viral. And we're lucky enough that I got him to be our guest today. So welcome to the show, Joseph, awesome to have you here. I can't flame and wait to hear all of the secrets, <laughs> and unpackage and unlock like what it is, the brilliance that you do, because like I said, I was having a real giggle as I was watching uh, some of those viral videos. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Tracy. That was a, uh, a lovely introduction. Uh, I don't know that I can live up to it, but let, let's give it a shot. Uh, look, based on the videos I've seen, I am absolutely sure you can. All right, guys, let me firstly give you a little bit of a, um, a, a detail on how this show works. You guys all know that it's live. You have got the opportunity to actually uh, speak or comment to both uh, Joseph and myself. What you do need to do is let StreamYard see your name so that we can actually see the comments that come through as uh, you are speaking to us on the show. If you don't do that, I'm afraid you're going to be chatting away and neither Joseph or myself are going to see your comments. So really, really important that you make that happen and uh, that you talk with us throughout the show because we will answer all of your questions. So let's kind of backpedal a little bit here, Joseph, and, and let's, um, you know, this world of, let's call it business, has changed significantly. Like back in 2000, you know, the world that you were in creating videos or creating, you know, pro, uh, pro creative studios back then was significantly different to today. So let's talk a oh, little yeah. bit about those changes that you've seen over those years and sure. maybe what it means right now. Well, the, there's two big changes that I would would talk about. The first is when when I started my very first um, my very first client that really let me quit my corporate nine to five and start Procreative Studios was the little giant ladder infomercial. Um, I don't know. I know you're in Australia here in the United States where I am. It was one of the biggest infomercials at the time did over 200 million dollars with one commercial and so immediately now i always say we were only a very small part of the production there were three companies that produced that but that was kind of how i really got my taste into if you create something really good and then put it to a big audience you can get millions and millions of dollars in sales and so for about 15 years after the success of that infomercial, that's pretty much all we did was television, traditional kind of advertising that, you know, gets you in between watching your TV shows. 
Um, but the big problem is obviously, as you mentioned earlier, nobody watches TV anymore. I mean, the only time, uh, you know, you may watch sports, you may watch news, but you're certainly not sitting up at, you know, midnight flipping through the channels like we used to. And that's when mm -hmm. infomercials would typically be shown to you. Um, even the short form TV commercials that we used to do, you know, there's with a short form, there's really not enough time to tell a story. It's 30 seconds to remind you that McDonald's is giving, you know, two dollar Big Macs or whatever it is um, in, in the Super Bowl. You know, they, they, they'll make you laugh, but they still don't really tell a story in 30 seconds. Um, but it's interesting that the biggest, most expensive real estate on TV is the Super Bowl. What's the technique that they use in 90% of their ads? It's humor. So mm -hmm. as time went on and our results from television started going down and down and down, our clients started to say to us, you know, we, we can't work together unless we find out how to get back to the glory days of the results that we used to get. And so we started doing, you know, traditional online videos on YouTube, YouTube and slap it on their websites. But we were still using the same kind of what I call boring style sales pitches. You see them all the time, right? You're interrupted all the time by them. And it wasn't until about five years ago that I really started to look at what companies like the Harmon Brothers were doing. Uh -huh. um, Poopery, Squatty Potty, Purple Mattress, Fiber Fix, uh -huh. Chat Books. You know, these were kind of the, the these huge viral style videos that got tens of millions, hundreds of millions of views. And that's when I really said, oh, they're getting those kinds of views. And more importantly, those views are translating into sales. So let's try to figure out and copy what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and to give you a comparison, so the very biggest video that we had ever done in 15 years in our traditional you know sales type videos we got one video to get a hundred thousand views on youtube which i thought was pretty amazing at the time the very first campaign we launched uh between three videos when we assembled this team of funny writers and we'll talk about that in a minute because yeah. that's the thing that was the difference between before the phone would ring and people would say hey we want to do a funny video and i would say sorry we don't do those because because nothing's worse than trying to be funny and just looking silly. Mm -hmm. That's so important for your listeners to, to, to really take note of that one thing. The only thing worse than being, you know, that, than being boring is looking silly. And, and if you mm -hmm. don't have the right kind of writers um, and the actors, and we'll talk about that as well, you will look silly. And that's not mm -hmm. what you want. But once we'd assembled this team of really great writers, the first campaign that we launched got 7 million views. Take Compare that, that guys, did you hear 000, that? Right? <laughs> 7 million views. And that translated into $500,000 in sales. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward to today, you know, that was five years ago, fast forward to today, we have a campaign with a company called True Earth. They make laundry detergent, mm -hmm. one of the most boring subjects you can probably imagine. Mm -hmm. And we're about to hit 90 million views on the videos that we have done for that company. And, and you know, tens of millions of sales, just outstanding performance from that campaign. So that's kind of bring you up to today. That's all we do today. We don't, when, when clients call us up, doesn't matter how much money they offer us, we basically say the only kinds of videos we're interested in doing is the ones that work. And here's why, and I'll, and I'll shut up for a minute. You can ask me more questions. The reason is when you're on social media, why are you there? To be entertained. Entertained. Mm -hmm. So the closer your ad can look to that entertainment that they've come to seek, the more you'll connect with your customers. So we tell people our ads are really sketch comedies in disguise. 
right? We, when mm -hmm. you start mm -hmm. watching our ad, it doesn't look like an ad. It doesn't feel like an ad. We want to get you laughing before we even mention that this is an ad. Because by that time, mm -hmm. we'll kind of have got you hooked. And if we're relevant enough, we'll have also presented a problem that you realize you have. And then when we tell you the solution, you're way more likely to convert into a customer. So that's all we do these days is funny sales videos. And for people that uh, call us up and we tell them, sorry, we're too busy or you're out of our budget range. We also have a free ebook that goes over all eight steps that we take every one of our projects through so that your listeners can follow and do the exact same thing and get the very, very similar results. All right, guys, and if you're wondering, how do I get my hands on that document? At the end of today's show, I'm going to pop that up and you guys can go there and get yourself a copy of it. And uh, you can go through, Jay, uh, through Joseph's framework, which has got the eight steps in it. Br absolutely brilliant. So I want to go now to, you know, not everybody, like you say, you know, you can try and be funny, but if you don't come across as funny and you look silly and stupid, you know, it's just not going to work. So there are some people that, that you know, are going to be like, oh, I can't do, I can't do a humorous type of video. Who does this? So firstly, obviously, you've got an agency that does this entire thing for someone if they have the budget to do so. And then secondly, if you don't, we're well, going to go and grab, download some of uh, Joseph's uh, you know, his his tips and tools and strategies and, and give it a go yourself. So who does this sort of thing work for? Because you've spoken about, you know, the laundry detergent and guys, you've got to go watch it because they are funny. I watched them <laughs> and they, they made me laugh. They're really, really well done. Um, so, so if you're somebody who doesn't have an e-commerce type product, a physical product like a laundry detergent, but you're somebody who's maybe got an info type product, does this work? What sort of niches and uh, genres and, and types of products does this style of video work for? So I get that question all the time. And my res canned response is they only work for companies whose customers are humans. <laughs> right? Wow. So yeah. you're aliens? Not going to work. Sorry, no, people. Well, I, I, I don't understand the, the, the humor of aliens yet. Now, <laughs> That's interesting because it also won't work if you're trying to run it to an alien language. So in other words, I only produce videos for English speaking countries. I wouldn't dream mm -hmm. of trying to produce a video and then subtitle it for, you know, French and Spanish and German because not human just doesn't translate. So, so other than that, any business is, is fair game, whether you're driving sales, whether you're driving leads, whether you're driving, you know, signups, whether you're driving opt-ins, subscriptions, that 7 million uh, view campaign that I told you about, that was for a online video subscription service. We just did a campaign. In fact, I was talking to the digital marketing team this morning about it. We just did a campaign about a year ago for a home loan company. So there's no sale that's happening there. It's a lead that's being generated mm -hmm. and their cost per lead has plummeted and their, you know, closing ratio has skyrocketed. They're pumping as much money as they can into these ads. And maybe now might be a good time to crush everyone's dreams. Mm -hmm. These ads are not organically viral videos. So mm -hmm. when you see, when you, even the Harmon brothers have admitted this, their videos would maybe be, you know, 100,000 views if they hadn't have fueled them with paid ads. Mm -hmm. they, uh, their videos are now hundreds of millions of views and have created companies that have hundreds of millions of dollars in sales because they understand the simple principle that when you run these videos, like I said earlier, they're ads in disguise but just because you create a funny video and put it out on the internet does not mean that it's going to go viral it might but so far i've never had that happen now what i do have is that my last uh, true earth video i think has fifty thousand shares so you know probably has about a million free organic views but they don't come until you start the snowball rolling to get it to those people that are going to share it. So about maybe 10% of our views are 
free organic views, but 90% of them are paid ads. The point isn't actually to make a video go viral. I always start my podcast with the disclaimer that our name, how to make a video go viral is nothing but clickbait. But the result is the same. People aren't looking for a video to go viral. They're looking to, for sales. And so what we teach in our podcast is how to make a video that when fueled with paid ads will bring you enough sales to make you want to continue spending so that it will look like it went viral. When you see a video that has you know, 10 million views on YouTube and there is an ad element to that video, YouTube will treat that video very, very different. The algorithms can instantly detect the difference between your cat video and my ad. And, and no longer will they, you know, if, if you want to use those platforms, you have to pay to play. But the big goal is, is not organically vi viral videos. I kind of describe it. In fact, I think I heard the Harmon brothers describe it uh, as a magical vending machine that's full of $100 bills. And it only costs $20 to use the machine. How many times are you going to want to use it, Tracy? Mm -hmm. You want to use that over, you want to over use it regularly, over right? And over, over and over and over. If you're, if you're going to get $80 profit every time you spend mm -hmm. $20, you're going to milk that until it's empty. Well, guess what? This is a mm -hmm. magical vending machine that never ends as long as you, know, you have the inventory to keep up. And that actually becomes... A problem with a lot of our clients is they call us up and say, shut the campaign off. We've sold out. We we don't want to spend any more money because we've. So you have to be ready for these kinds of videos as well. Which is which is all important. I mean, these are all factors that a lot of people don't don't really think about when they're starting. Oh, I just want to make as many sales as I possibly can. And interestingly enough, with my background, you know, I've seen many, many, many businesses actually go out of business because they grew too fast and they weren't yes. ready for it. Um, yes. Is actually a very, very common problem. So I want to, I want to sort of, I want to go here now. I want to talk about um, some of. I mean, the guts of this really is, and one of the things that has become clear to me is even though you haven't talked about it necessarily, is like audience, is really understanding like who, who the heck are you going to be talking to? Like what are some of the what are some of the fundamental elements that you need to think about? <laughs> I knew you'd have a list. That's that's you that need to one think of my about. Oh yeah, cha ching, ready to go. Yeah, so great let's question. talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the very first step before you think about anything else, don't don't worry about creating a story. Don't worry about how you're going to film this, who you're going to cast as the actors. You That's all wasted unless you understand who is it that you're talking to. What are their problems? How does your solution solve their problem in the way that your competitors don't? Or if they don't, you've got to figure out what is your unique selling proposition and, you know, don't waste money on marketing something that isn't fundamentally built right from the ground up. So one of the big exercises that we go through with every video that we produce is we won't take on a client unless they have at least 100 customer reviews that I and my team can read to understand not what do you as the client think your product solves, because a lot of times there's too many people drinking the Kool-Aid. They, they l fall in love with their products and they don't realize that there's a completely different reason or maybe a, a deeper underlying reason why people are actually buying your products. And the best way to do that is to listen to your customers. So, you know, Amazon reviews or, you know, any kind of genuine unfiltered feedback. We want to read good reviews, bad reviews. We want it all. And then we'll compile a spreadsheet of the top five reasons why people buy. Now, that's a prioritized list. And reason number one is going to get mentioned maybe five times in the video. Reason number five may be mentioned once because you, you got to speak to the strengths. But understanding why are people buying your product and then who are they? Where are they? Why are they? You know, all of the basic marketing 101, identify the reasons why maybe you're not as good as your competitor. So you've got to then speak to different strengths or, you know, if if your big objection stumbling block is that your price is too high, spend more time talking about why in the long run you're cheaper. 
because buying quality is going to overcome the fact that you're going to buy three of theirs for every one of yours or whatever it is. You just got to create your framework of why people should buy. And that's all in the discovery phase, learning, learning about your customer, learning why they buy, where they are and where the best places to connect with them would be. Cause I don't want to go spend, you know, um, three to four months, which is how long it takes us to produce a video, creating a video for Facebook. And then all of a sudden realize my audience is much, much younger, never would be seen dead on Facebook. They're over on TikTok where I can only run a 60 second ad. So all of that basic building blocks need to start. Step one, do your research. That's the foundation to your house. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And an, and a must in anything you do, you know, like the foundational work, you don't do that, you know, you're building a, a house of cards. It's about, you know, going to fall down when you get to the point of, hang on a minute, uh, that's the wrong platform that I've just created this video for. And it's not, and then you're wondering, scratching your head, wondering why it hasn't worked. Right. So, so, so the next thing that I want to talk about is like, you'd mentioned that in the, in the, um, the process that you do, it's like, it's finding that audience, but then, then what do you do next? Like I noticed that in the video that you, um, that you had on, I don't want to talk too much about them because I want people to actually go and watch them because they are, they, they'll give them a giggle. But the laundry detergent, right? So I noticed that in that there was a very, people have a tendency to still stay very, very wide. Like it would be very easy to, well, I've got a laundry detergent product. It's similar to all of those that are on the market, but there's a very specific market that you, that I could see you guys were going after with that particular type of video. And people often get afraid of niching down and almost filtering out some of the opportunity that they see might be available to them. So can we talk a little bit about how important it is to get like almost very granular and yes. micro with that audience? Very important. You, you, if you're everything to everyone, you're nothing to nobody. So you have to say this, that's why I mentioned the five reasons why people buy and, and that will come out of the review review of the reviews, right? And so when we did that, it was very clear that the number one reason why people were buying that laundry detergent was because they cared about the planet. It doesn't have mm -hmm. plastic. It comes in a biodegradable, you know, compostable cardboard sleeve, essentially. And so even though our audience actually was everyone, I mean, they ran uh, we, we just do the creative. We don't get involved with the marketing. We partner with companies or the client already has that in-house. In that case, the co-founder is a genius at Facebook. And he already knew that he wanted to target, I, I think the term he used was, you know, broad and wide as a fat seal. Like he wanted, he wanted to target everyone. Um, and so what we did was we didn't use language that was exclusive we didn't use langu language that was, you know, hippie granola stuff. We wanted to take a mainstream, you know, mother, make her look hip, make her look current, make her look like you would want to be friends with her. If we went too far to the extreme and made her, you know, a hippie chick, Volkswagen bus driving, you know, person that doesn't use deodorant, that would have appealed to that core demographic, but it would have alienated everyone else. So instead we mm -hmm. decided to go the other way, appeal to the everyone, but use the aspirational language that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are, you still care about having clean, clean air, clean water. We don't want to leave this planet worse for our children than it is today. Everyone can relate to that, even if they're not an extremist. And so then if we could show them that this is a product that still works just as good as your current stuff, but will make you a feel like a better person. And that's huge on social media. That's why we got so many shares, because people want to look like they're doing good. And so why wouldn't they want to share that video? It's funny. It actually solves the problem. And it's a good altruistic mission-based company. Now, you may have listeners that say, well, you know, 
I, I make widgets. I, I don't have a mission-based company. Well, figure out, figure out a way to still position yourself as being a good choice in the world. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, you, you need to figure that out. And in some cases, marketing drives R&D. Add a component to your product that makes it so that you are seen to be doing good in the company. Or maybe you're doing terrible in the world. Add a little branch to your company that says for every widget we create that creates emissions, we'll plant a tree. There's all sorts of different ways that you can mm -hmm. create, um, not just to be seen to be doing good, but to actually do good because nothing sells better than the truth. And that's uh, a harmonism, uh, something that the Harmon brothers always say. And I believe I that love 100%. that. Nothing sells better than the truth. I love that. Yep. I, I want to I ask some questions. There was a word that you used in that uh, that last uh, passage there, which is aspirational language. Yeah, that's a huge. And, and I want to, mm -hmm, and I want to talk about that because, you know, particularly like it's really interesting that, in my opinion, no, there is no time in history or in my lifetime, in the 40 odd years that I've been on this planet, that has been more significant than now and the last year or so, because people are looking for the new future, like what our world has been tipped upside down. So it's like creating the, the new world. What could that look like? So I want to talk about the use of aspirational language and why that is so important. And we see that threaded throughout loads and loads of different things. I've seen it through political, um, you know, any kind of political, um, you know, campaign. The ones that do really well have a lot of aspirational language threaded throughout them. Why is yeah. that important? How do you do it? And yeah. Well, we use aspirational marketing in two ways. So, the first way is like I just said, nothing sells better than the truth. And in today's world of transparent transparency, I mean, there is nowhere to hide. Literally, there's not. Gone are the days when you can fake something and just say, ah, nobody will notice that. People notice, people share, people will research. I mean, you'd be you'd be amazed at how detailed some people in their comments mm -hmm. will will say things. And some of it keeps us honest. I mean, it's it's just the plain truth. And so you have to be a you have to be not just seen to be doing good, but actually doing good. And and also, you know, we say, yeah, funny sales videos really work well. And one of the quick ways to be funny is to be dirty, to be sleazy, to be cheap. We want to be the total opposite of that because we don't want any of our brands to be lowered. We want to we want to increase the the value of these brands. And so you've got to, you know, I take my hat off to comedians who do clean comedy because it's much, much harder. And so there are certain topics that we will stay away from. Um, you always have to be polarizing. You, if you don't get 20 percent of your comments being negative, you haven't pushed it far enough. You want to get about 80 percent people saying I love it, 20 percent saying I hated it. Or else you 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 know that you just didn't push the envelope quite far enough, and that's a really hard thing to balance. And it comes back to one of the steps, which is testing. You've got mm -hmm. to test everything that you do, not on yourself, not on your spouse or your whoever. You got to test it on the audience that you created in step one. Remember, we went through mm -hmm. the process of learning who is our customer avatar. So as your coming up with brainstorm ideas, as you're coming up with the script, as you're casting your actors, your actresses, you want to be testing them on people who fit your customer avatar to say, is this funny? Is this compelling? Is there anything here that you really think is offensive and that wouldn't go well with your tribe? And again, you've, you know, as long as eight out of 10 of them say yes, don't worry about the two that say no unless there's a really mm -hmm. good reason. So anyway, that that's a different kind of aspirational. The other side of it is we always want to be visually aspirational. So every video you'll notice, we shoot it in a slightly nicer house than we think you have. We cast a slightly more attractive actor or actress than we think you are. 
we make them their life just a little bit better because if we if we went too far if we you know cast a supermodels for every that's just not relatable if we mm-hmm. if we shot it at buckingham palace you know that's not relatable but if we sh- if we go just a little bit more aspirational as far as you know making you think that's close to my life but it's a little bit better marketing 101 will tell you people buy products because they want to be like the people in the ads mm-hmm. that they see Mm-hmm. And so that's that's another side of aspirational that we take very seriously is, is, you know, the locations become characters in our videos. You know, how the products are shown needs, you know, you don't just slap a product down on a kitchen counter and film it. You you light it just right and you make it look like, you know, your life will be better when you buy this product. And hopefully, you know, it is a good product and your life will be better. But um yeah, that's that's what I'll say about that. And it, and it all comes together in the language as well. You know, using words that are just a little bit better, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more exciting than the language mm-hmm. that you and I would, you know, talk over coffee about. Mm-hmm. So it's it's creating it. So it's it's within arm's reach. It's like, I, yes, I, I'm not quite there yet. I can see it. I can yes. feel it, taste it. I want it. It's just right there. And if I right. stretched far enough, I'd be able to grab it. That's the sort of that's yep. the sort of aspiration we want to create. Not so far out that it's like, oh, my God, it's never I'm never going to be able to get there. But just right. with almost just just slightly out of reach. But you could do it if if, if you gave it a little bit more of a Oomph. Yeah. And then you pair that with an irresistible low friction offer. I mean, that's that's a whole nother conversation we could talk for hours. You got to mm-hmm. create low hanging fruit for customers to be able to reach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for example, with True Earth you know, laundry detergent, we tell people click now, get a 30 day risk free trial. Now, we're actually not giving anything away for free. We're just doing the same thing Amazon does when they say everything that you buy, if you don't like it, you send it back. It's a 30 days mm-hmm. to send it back, which means it's risk free. Um, mm-hmm. With other clients, we've we've tried to even when there's high ticket items, we've tried to say, OK, how can we make it more reachable to the average person? So just creating offers that are low friction and that really the only goal of your video isn't to sell. It's to get them to click through to the sales page where they will then be sold. And so Mm -hmm. anything that you can do and you can firm up the language on the sales page of, you know, here are the terms and conditions and make sure that they totally understand what the offer is that they're taking. But you don't need to go into all of the details in the video Just, you know, your goal is click below for more information Mm -hmm. or click below for your risk-free trial or click below for a money-saving offer or to buy one, get one free or to get a 30-day free, you know, trial of this software or this video service or, you know, Mm -hmm. click below to get a free consultation where, you know, just put in your information. Now we've captured a lead. It's all sorts of Mm -hmm. different ways. People make it too hard for me as a customer to engage with them. Find mm-hmm. out what's the easiest, cheapest way that I can take a first step. Because chances are, if I take a first step, I'm going to take a second and a third. It's funnel marketing. You know this stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, I agree. You know, often we can make this very complicated with some ridiculous 80 step funnel where you just need to strip this right back and make it as simple as possible. How do you get somebody to take the first step, then the next step? then the next step and then all of a sudden you know they're in your world and want to buy everything from you and that's generally how uh, how this entire process works so i i now want to go back to you mentioned earlier about you know finding that that good thing that you can do like even if you know you like you say you've got um whatever it is that you sell creates carbon emissions and and we're going to offset that by planting a tree 
finding some way of doing some good in your business. Now, I noticed as I was doing my research and, uh, you know, as I do with every guest that comes on our show, I want to I want to go and find out a lot more about you. What do you do? You know, what what do you even do in your and when you're in, you're not doing what you're doing right now? You know, it's that uh, making things a transparently transparent, you know, to use your words. So I saw that on your Facebook page, you were talking about a recent trip that you had done where you were giving back. So tell us a little bit about that and how that has come to be and what it is that your, I suppose, your um, your business stands for and why you're so passionate about that little expedition that you've just recently completed. Yeah, well, this is very timely because we just barely on Friday, so what, four, four days ago, um, released the video that I'll, I'll talk about. So about a year ago, one of my clients approached me and said, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we work with a charity that drills water wells in Africa. So imagine in your mind, the poorest of the poor shanty towns of Africa, miles and miles and miles from any municipality where they just don't have clean water, where they don't have any water in their homes. Uh, and many of these people have to walk miles, literally every single day to get clean water. So anyway, my client was contributing to this charity and had actually um, raised enough money over the past four years to drill a hundred wells. To put it in context, one well will feed or will give water to about three to four thousand people forever, for life. Once it's drilled, it'll always work. Um, and, and so, you know, that's almost half a million people that they had blessed because of their efforts. And so they said, we'd love to make a documentary about this hundredth well. Um, you know, would you, we don't have any budget, but would you be willing to get involved? And so, you know, I've always wanted to do something like that. I've done little projects mm -hmm. like that in the past, but nothing to this scale. Uh, and so I just said, I said, absolutely, let's do it. You know, and we went about, what was it, four months ago, and I can't tell you, it changed my life, trip of a lifetime. I mean, you see images on television and you hear stories. Nothing is like actually meeting these people and realizing how incredibly blessed we are. Um, but at the same time, they were so happy. They have absolutely nothing. And I think that they have a lot less problems than a lot of us that live in, you know, Western culture have. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we could spend forever talking about that, but I, I thought about my kids and, and, you know, how these kids had just such bright outlooks, even though they had absolutely nothing. So anyway, we uh, produced this documentary to help raise money for future wells and the first thing that i did when i got home is i said okay we're we're gonna donate a well our company um and and i actually just got a text from the charity today with a picture of the primary school where this well is being drilled um that's literally going to change people's lives and so one of the things that we launched this week if you go to our website you'll see on the top right of the home page for every new video um that that we're hired to do we're going to donate a thousand dollars to another well um and it only costs seventy five hundred dollars for one well and think about that that transforms a village for life how can you put a dollar amount on that so anyway i could talk for forever about this but i think that you know once once you have a business that is sustaining itself and that is starting to accumulate a profit in the bank we all have a responsibility to say okay, we've been blessed. How do we give back? And this is just the way that we've decided. I love that. I love those um, the imagery that you had on there and, and sharing that story with us. You were also talking a little bit earlier when we, we jumped on and we did our, our, our pre-conversation before we actually went live on the show. And you were saying about a not-for-profit organization. And just, we were guys, we were talking a little bit about how things have changed significantly and how there are a lot of businesses out there, particularly in the you know COVID and uh, this pandemic world that we've been living in for the last couple of years, how they've been really struggling and uh that that you have been lucky enough being in the uh the 
you know, the type of business or the industry that you're in, which is online, how it's actually made a radical difference to the way in which, you know, your business uh, has, you know, uh, I don't know what the number is, but it has certainly in improved and increased and the sales are, um, are really, really strong. And those that have started working with you or those that have adapted you're seeing a significant improvement oh, yeah. in their results too. So let's talk about that because I think I really, really want us to be able to help. Those that are sitting back right now thinking, God, man, there's, what the heck can I do? How do I do this? You know, things are not going so well. I just, you know, I need to get customers back in my door. What are some of the, the simple switches that they can make in their business over this next week that could make some significant difference to the way in which their life looks in a year's time from now. Yeah. So it, it is kind of a perfect storm for us. And I feel guilty saying that because so many businesses have struggled through this and, and on around. Um, but a lot of the businesses that we have worked with, um, there's one, I, I'm thinking of your audience and I know a lot of them are small businesses. I'll tell you a very quick story. Uh, um, a guy came to me about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, right before COVID. Um, he's, he sells a device that helps massage headaches away. Um, $500 a machine, not, not cheap, not the kind of impulse purchase us e-commerce marketers like to, to see every day. And he said, I've, I've seen your videos. I know if I was to do one of these, it would help me. And he said, if I have to mortgage my house, I want to do this. Now, we didn't have to do anything close to that. But I took that as these are precious dollars. I've got to I got to make sure I do this guy right, because this isn't some, you know, faceless entity that has an unlimited checkbook. And I can't tell you how incredibly amazing it was when six months later, when COVID was at its height, he sent me an email, sorry, a year later. So six months into COVID, he sent me an email. He said, I'm looking at my, my sales numbers. I have doubled month over month sales compared to a year ago and consistently. In fact, he's, I think, episode four of my podcast, How to Make a Video Go Viral. I sit down and interview him and we talk about how, back to what we were talking about earlier, what he loved about it was that it was manageable growth. We slowly turned his ads on. I say we, his agency, slowly turned his ads on so that he could manage that growth. It wasn't an overwhelming, you know, he was spending maybe $50 a day on digital ads and he saw a doubling in sales. So for, you, for the people that are listening at home, I'm not saying call me and let's do a video. I'm saying think about what have you never done before? What avenues have you never used before? I am 100% convinced that the number one tool on the planet for marketing still is Facebook. Absolutely mm -hmm. convinced of it. There is no other targeting tool that allows you to get down to the granularity of who it is you want to target. Now, yes, we can talk about iOS updates and privacy and all of that stuff. That withstanding, I'm still convinced that so many business owners have yet to scratch the surface. A lot of, a lot of you listening maybe haven't even ever run a Facebook ad. So my first piece of advice, forget video, create a, a Facebook ad, go on Fiverr, find somebody for a hundred dollars that will create you an ad, run that ad and see what happens. Now you're mm -hmm. going to have to do a little bit of homework or preferably hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Cause you, you can waste your money if you don't know what you're doing. But when people pair the ads that I do with the power of Facebook and other platforms, but Facebook is the 800 pound gorilla. It still is. Obviously there are some people where that doesn't make sense, but you know, if, if you're targeting people, you know, that are 30 plus, they're all over Facebook. They, they still are. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, even if it's nothing more than pulling out this amazing device, which when I started in this business, this would have cost me $100,000 to have a camera that could shoot 4K in the way that this iPhone does. People, they, they complicate it. They think that they need, you know, $50,000 cameras to shoot ads. You don't. 
Now, if you want to get the kinds of results we talked about earlier, you've got to stand out and look different. And that's where agencies like us really mm -hmm. bring value. But if you've never done this before, learn as much as you can about Facebook ads, then go find somebody who really knows how to do it and spend a hundred dollars on Facebook ads and see what comes back. Because I'm, I'm convinced there's so many businesses that are sleeping giants, but just haven't unlocked that simple box. Now, if you want to say, well, then what do I do? Then download my ebook and it's going to take you a long time to go through the process and we we're actually booked. We have a waiting list. We can't take on new clients. So this isn't an, an infomercial for me. But I genuinely believe that if you will go through those eight steps, go hire local people, even if it's college students, to do certain parts. Now, there's two parts of my process that I will tell you, don't try to do it yourself and don't try to do it on the cheap. Those are step number Three, which is the scripting. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have good writers. Back to our first uh, quotable, nothing's worse than trying to be funny. Just look, you'll just look silly. So you have to have great writers. Now that doesn't have to bust the bank. And here's, here's some tips. Fiverr is my number one tool. I have probably 20 in freelance uh, workers that I've never met in person. I have a team here in, 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 in person, but I have a ton of writers that are on my writing room um, collaborative because you, you will never get one writer. The, our scripts are written by at least, at least eight writers because what you need to do is you need to go through multiple versions and then you need to have share that version with as many people as possible and get lots of different people to put their ideas in. If you've seen the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You know that the best lifeline is ask the audience because mm -hmm. the wisdom of the crowd always wins. So go find good writers on Fiverr or on Upwork or on your local classified sites or even go down to your local comedy club and see what comedians you think are funny. Because chances are, if you're kind of like your customer, your customer will think they're funny. And comedians work for pretty cheap. They work during the night. They travel to different clubs. And during the day, they're on planes or trains or automobiles. And guess what? They love to fill that time with paid gigs. And so writing for you is a perfect way for them to add to their income. Anyway, so step one. The first step that you must not try to do yourself is writing the script. And then the next step that you must not do yourself is acting. Unless you're a <laughs> trained comedy actor, you, you could be, you know, the most brilliant Shakespeare actor. I'd tell you, don't even try. You got to be a comedy actor. And that's where local acting agencies are a gold mine. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but it doesn't cost a cent to audition actors. So what I do, I literally did it this morning. I sent out a casting call to three local agencies. I said, I want to see, you know, from each of you, at least 20 auditions. So I'm going to get about 60 auditions back. It's going to take a lot of time to go through those, but that's what you have to do to get down to the right one. The most important part of your script, uh, of your video, second to your script, is the actor who delivers that script. Everything else you can do yourself. You can film it on your iPhone. You can bring together friends and family to be the extras in the background. You can use your friend's house to film it in. Um, you know, you can even use somebody that knows Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, but isn't, mm -hmm. you know, some big expensive editor because all of that stuff can get fixed. What you cannot fix is a bad script or a bad performance. That is fantastic advice. So, guys, I just have popped up on the screen right now for you to go and uh, be able to download the ebook that uh, that Joseph is kindly giving us, which is how to produce a funny sales video without having to hire them, which is a little bit novel, right? Most people are like, we want you to download this so that you do hire us. But what he's saying today is they're fully chock-a-block full, but 
you, he wants to show you how you can do this all yourself. It's eight simple steps that you need to follow. And like he's just mentioned, there's a couple there that you need to make sure that you hire some assistance for the scripting and the acting. And he's given us some great ways that you can find script writers and actors to uh, to be inside it, you know, to be the people that are in that are actually acting in your uh, in your videos. Other than that, head on over to funnysalesvideos.com. A couple of things I want you to do, watch the videos. So first thing I would do here would be downloading this document. Why would I download the document first? This is just the way that Tracy's brain works. I'd be like, I want that document. And what I would then be doing is actually watching the videos and unpackaging, almost reverse engineering, exactly what they've done. So when I'm looking at his eight-step process, I'd be like, all right, so what did they do here? How did they get that information? What was the script? So if I'm looking at the scripting, you know, in here, he gives some details about, you know, finding a relatable character. I would be looking at the video and go, well, who's the relatable character and what specifically are they doing? So I'd actually reverse engineer stuff because that's just how, you know, that's how my brain works. And how I kind of try to work stuff out. So that's my little tip um, as to how I would be doing this. Go and have a look at them. And not to mention, They'll make you laugh. If you're looking for a moment to be, you know, to to lighten your day, go and watch those videos because they will truly make you laugh. And they will they will get you to understand what Joseph's talking about and what we've been speaking about today and how powerful they are. You'll see that some of them have had millions, tens of millions of views on them. They are you know, although he doesn't talk about them being organically viral, we know that there is a layering effect to this. That you need to start with it. You're going to you're going to really give them a boost by using paid advertising. That we know what we're not hiding that. That's totally transparent in what we've spoken about today. You must do that if you really want to give your uh, videos the the uh, the power behind them that they need to be able to go viral. I want to finish with today by giving Joseph an opportunity to share anything else that you think is really important for our audience to know. Sure. Yeah. So I would add to everything that you just said, go watch those videos, but then go buy some of my clients' products. And I guarantee Absolutely. you, I guarantee you, if we get a big enough audience to go see those videos, we will get some sales because guess what? It's not about being funny. It's about creating sales. And that's ultimately mm -hmm. what my company is about. I'll give you a quick co compare and contrast. Just like I mentioned, you know, our biggest video was 100,000 and now our biggest campaign is close to 90 million, still blows my mind. We, when we go into a company, a well-oiled machine, big companies that have very, very sophisticated marketing teams, and we do nothing more than just take out their creative and replace it with our video, we see return on ad spends double. Multiple times we've seen that happen. And so it's, it's, it's all about creating a video, not to go viral and to get the vanity of having millions of views, although that's very nice and it does increase social proof. In fact, True Earth, was tr before they did videos with us, they were trying to get into these big retail stores and their salespeople were hitting brick walls. Guess what happened after the video launched? They yeah. started calling their salespeople saying, customers are coming into our store asking for True Earth. We don't have it. We're going to need to start stocking it. I mean, I can't even tell you how much additional revenue that will never be tracked with the pixel came because of that. And so it's it's all about Yes, immediate sales, but also brand likability. So mm -hmm. if I make you laugh, I mean, you can't measure that on a spreadsheet, how top of mind you are now. The mm -hmm. next time I'm like, oh, I actually do need laundry detergent. The first person that's going to come to mind is the one that you like and that you remember. And there's nothing more. I mean, psychologically, there's something that happens when somebody laughs at something. They're going to remember it much, much more. So anyway, it's it's if you're a business owner. Everything that we've talked about may be entertaining, but all you really care about is how can I increase sales? How can I increase mm -hmm. my opt-in? How can I increase my you know, email list? How can I increase my free downloads or whatever it is that your funnel is leading people to? 
I promise you, as somebody that's done this for 20 years, for some of the biggest brands on the planet, nothing has worked as well as these kinds of videos, which is why I literally shut the door to any other clients that say, we just want to create an old style video. And so if it was me in your situation, I would seriously be looking at how do I do something that is different than what my competitors are doing, that's going to make my customers remember me, that's going to stop them from scrolling past all of the other mm -hmm. videos. And humor is the number one way. And one last thing that we haven't talked about, the most important part of your video is the first five seconds. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if nobody watches past mm -hmm. that, it doesn't, you could have spent a million dollars on some special effect at the 30 second point, nobody's going to see it. And so one thing that we do is we put the majority of our creative juices into that, we call it the opening hook, the first five to 10 seconds. And what we always do where budget allows, and most of the time it does, is we'll create three totally different hooks and we'll test the same video, version one, version two, version three. It's the same video with the exception of the opening hook. And so think about as you're trying to create your own videos, how do we not necessarily make a big entertaining video, but how do we start by grabbing your attention with an opening hook? Because that's the most important part of your video. Absolutely. In this day and age when humans have uh, less uh, concentration than a goldfish, apparently. Yep. So, you know, you five seconds. If you can get that that opening hook and grab somebody's attention, stop the scroll, which that advert is designed to do, and then get them to take that very next step, like Joseph has talked about, you know, we create this to get them to take the next step. And if you want to talk about everything about your product, pop it all on the sales page and somebody will go there and, you know, that's where they can do further research and make the sale. But make no, no, no bones about it. This is very much a sales strategy. So the intention here is that you are creating something that is going to increase your bottom line. It's going to add sales. It's going to grow your business. And in fact, it even creates leverage and scalability because you're able to set it, you know, once you've got it set up, and it, it starts to gain traction and uh, momentum. Well, you just keep feeding, you know, keep fueling it and uh, allow it to continue to grow. So I want to say thank you so much for being here. I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I Me loved too. going and watching some of the videos. They're really cool. And I want to say to everybody today, you guys need to head on over to, to funnysalesvideos.com. Take Joseph up on his offer. He's given you the opportunity to download um, just an exchange for your, your email address. Go and grab a copy of the eight steps. Follow them through. And like I said, then go and watch the videos and see exactly what they did. That's my my little um, you know two cents worth of how I would do a little bit of uh, super sleuthing and, and checking out you know the reverse engineering of how something is done. Do that. And then head over to my podcast, How to Make a Video Go Viral. If you've liked anything today, we go into way more detail. I think we're on 20 episodes right now. We've, we started earlier this year. So check that out on any, any podcast platform. For sure. I mean, go into his podcast and just, you know, go and binge on those last 20 videos that they've just, the last 20 podcast episodes that they've just created. And he'll expand further on what we've spoken about today. So again, guys, I want to say thank you very much for joining us on the Unlock Show today. I'm Tracy Wilson. I've been joined today by my very special guest, Joseph Watkins, who is the, who founded uh, Procreative Studios and is also the owner and founder of funnysalesvideos.com. And like he said, you can head on over and download the podcast. Make sure that you get that on all of the major platforms and you can continue to uh, listen and uh, learn about how to make your sales videos go viral and add dollars to your bottom line too with Joseph and his team. So thanks very much. I'll see you guys again next Wednesday, same time, same back channel will be right here on Facebook ready for you guys with another episode of the Unlock Show. Thanks very much for joining me and bye for now. Thanks Joseph. Thank you. See you guys later.